Hello everyone and thank you much for watching. This is me Mr. P and welcome back to another episode of self-hosting lab series. In this video we'll show you how to set up Trillium Next inside your home lab. Trillium Next is a note-taking service but not just a simple note-taking service. Trillium Next is a very very powerful note-taking service. It will allow you to do a bunch of different style notes you can uh, you can save notes as a plain text you can add images you can write notes as a code you can you can embed web pages and etc and way way more trillium is really really super powerful note taking app and the most important it is open sourced there is a i will leave the link to this github page in the description below for you to go and check it out but here we go this is roughly what the trillium mode looks like when you set it up there is a hierarchy a tree structure on the left of your notes i'll show you everything how it runs how it works i've been using trillium for about three four weeks now i was using memos uh, note taking service i had done a video about memos um, quite a while ago i'll leave a link to the description below if you want a more simpler way of taking notes and self host and note taking service and trillium is basically the same thing as memos but with 99,000 more features added on top so let's start setting up trillium if I go and look for docker compose file in this list here we go if i click on that and this is the very simple docker compose file that we will use to self host trillium so I'll click on this button just to copy this file and jump into a Portainer. Portainer runs inside a virtual machine, Docker Sandbox, where I'm just showing you a demos uh, for the Docker containers. So this is uh, the Docker running Ubuntu, Ubuntu Server 24.04, I believe a version is. So I'll click right now while I'm in the Portainer, click on Stacks and click Add the Stack. I'll give a name, so I'll say Trillium-Next. Scroll down a bit and I'll paste the Docker Compose file. There's a bunch of commented lines here which will guide you and will explain a bit more why you're doing one thing on another. I will leave them here, uh, but you can you can leave them or delete them as it is comment commented lines. They will not affect Docker Compose file. So we're gonna run service with the name Trillium and we're gonna use this image Trillium Next slash Notes, the latest version. And after that, I want to add container underscore name Trillium underscore next, just to make sure that Trillium of the container will have already predefined container name instead of Docker just creating one randomly. And then we're gonna we see that it is restart unless stopped, which means the Docker will keep the container running, or if you restart Ubuntu. Uh, of a VM or a container engine, this container will auto start because it says unless stopped, and that means that it will auto start unless you, are, and as admin, as a user, as a creator of this compo container, will stop it manually. Then, under environment, it, it specifies the Trillium data will be stored on the container side in this location. And the last line, as you can see, container side will be home node Trillium dash data. We need to specify where on the host side we want Trillium to store its data. So, uh, oh yeah, and then you have an option to change a port. If the port 88 is already used, you can change a port number here to something like 8181. Actually, I will delete this to show like that. I'll keep 8080 as there is no other containers running in that inside the system. So I know that port 8080 is going to be um, available for me to use. So right now let's sort where the Trillium will store its data. I'll open Docker uh, SSH client and this is the SSH um, SSH into the Docker sandbox VM. So right now I am inside the home Mr. P Docker folder. I will create another folder which I'm going to call Trillium dash next. I will change directory to Trillium dash next. Print working directory. This is what PWD stands for. Print working directory. I will copy the path to this location. Go back into a portainer. And all that starting with dollar sign all the way before semicolon and paste that in. So I'm instructing Docker Compose file that I want Trillium store data on the host in this location and i think that is it dude i gave a name yes it is so i scroll all the way down and i'll click on deploy the stack 
I already pre downloaded the Trillium Next Docker image. This uh, Docker image is about 850 megabytes in size and it will take you between three to four minutes to get everything set up depending on your internet speed. So right now I have the stack ready. I'll click on the name and I can see that there is one container linked to that stack and it's healthy. If I click on this icon, it will present me with the Docker container logs. And I can see that I, uh, well, I don't see any errors, which is a good sign. And I can see that it is listening on port 80 and the health checks are coming back with the status code of 200, which indicates that the connection is working and the container is healthy and running and happy and we can go and use it. So right now I'll go back to the uh, Trillium Next stack, click on this breadcrumb icon here, or breadcrumb URL. I can see there is a container more information, which is okay. Let's click on the containers. So under containers list, I can see Trillium Next. If I click on this icon on this number, I will jump straight away into the uh, into the Trillium. If you set up pro uh, port 10 appropriately, it will pick up the IP address. If it doesn't, you can enter the IP address of your Docker like that and specify the port number. So I'm being presented right now with the Trillium Next setup and I have three options. I am a new user and I want to create a new Trillium document for my notes. I have a desktop instance already and I want to set up the sync with it or I have a server instance already and I want to set up sync with it. Option one is just going to create a fresh Trillium Next instance with no notes, nothing, it's just a standard default demo notes will be provided, but nothing else. If you have a Trillium software running on your desktop, you can select option two and then you type the IP address of your desktop and it will connect and it will sync nodes between. It will make almost like a redundant, uh, high availability, redundant kind of notes, uh, note taking system. If the desktop is offline, you will have up to date notes if you allowed them to sync in time on the here and vice versa. Or if you have already Trillium somewhere set up, let's say somewhere in a cloud, in a Google or AWS or somewhere else, you select this and you make both servers link to each other. And that means that the nodes are spread out between two different places and they all in sync. I will select I am a new user for this demo and I'll click next. Now I will be presented to enter the password. So I'm just going to say this is going to be my password and set the password. And now I can go and log in. And I say, remember me and press login. And here we go. I am inside the Trillium dashboard. There's a bunch of notes already pre-created for the demo. As you can see, Trillium demo, and this gives you a bunch of uh, different kind of notes for you to go and check it out how they've been set up. If you're seeing Trillium in a white mode, not like I do in a dark mode, you need to click on this icon here in the top left hand corner and then choose options, then choose appearance and make sure theme is selected to dark if you want to use dark mode or you can leave as a light mode which is going to be like eyes burning thing so i'm going to leave as a dark mode and this is where you can change there when the week starts for you is it on monday or sunday and the language and there is a bunch of more settings you can choose and this is where the sync this is where you choose if you want to sync to another server if you have multiple instances set up you can make them to be synced between if you want to close the settings, you click on the X next to sync and it's going to close all the setup because all the settings, because the sync was the last page inside the settings we opened. So we back to a Trillium demo and I recommend for you to keep Trillium demo notes and all this stuff here and just this is going to be much easier for you. It's going to be almost like a cheat sheet for you where you can come back and check how it works. First time when I set up the Trillium, I deleted all of them and I was starting, I started to create notes and then like, I forgot, like I wanted to, how I'm, how I'm going to add image, how I can add code, can I embed the pages, can I embed the website and I, I struggled. So I had to reset all of it and now I have a Trillium demo as a separate entity, as a separate structure inside this hierarchy T structure layout. And just I suggest you to keep this just to come back and have a look for this video for this demo. I'm just going to use all these just to demonstrate for you how each works. And roughly I'll give you a bit more information about each of them, what they do and how, what kind of, I would say, uh, in kind of what kind of um, scenarios you might use them. First thing, if you don't want to have a root as a main line here, it's no problem. You just click on the root, click on here and you can change the name to whatever you want. So right now I change to Mr. P. So under inbox, 
this is where you can add just a standard list standard information as a url to a page or just creating a list of stuff you want to go and buy formatting examples this is where you will see what kind of examples or kind of formats you can get for example checkbox list uh, it shows up like this if i click on that i press enter and enter to uh, two square brackets it will convert into a tick boxes and now i can say okay i bought this bought this and i need to go and buy ice cream highlight the text you can highlight the text and this is where it creates a highlights list for example i want to remember kennedy space center to be in here i will select this text make it bold or under or italic or underline it will add this on the left hand side for me so i'm just going to say make it bold and as you can see it's end up in the highlight list which allows me to jump. So if I have a bunch of text like this, as you can see, every single time when Kennedy Space Center is being selected as bold, it appears here and I can click on this and jump between, let's say line 32, it jumps to line 32. Code blocks, for example, if you wanna add the code, there's a couple of ways you can do that. If I delete all that, let's go back inside this GitHub and uh, copy the Docker Compose file we just used. So I want to add the code. I can make all note to be a code. So I click on this icon here and no type from a text. I'll choose code and scroll all the way down. And I know it's going to be YAML file. And now if I paste it in, it automatically highlights the syntax of the YAML file. And it's much easier for me to see w which line is a comment, which line is not, and etc. It's pretty much, as you can see, almost like this, this kind of um, separation of the colors, but obviously using a different color palette. Or I can go and delete all that. And I can choose text and say, this is a Trillium Next Docker Compose. And now I, if I press this key on the next to number one on the keyboard on the left hand side three times it creates this block i paste that in and it creates like a separate embedded uh, location for the code and now if i press enter a couple of times i escape this box and i can continue continue writing the text here and now i created the box one thing when you're creating a notes you might uh, by accident click somewhere and start enter entering stuff with the keyboard or just be, be pressing with your fat fingers the keyboard you just mess up there is a way to lock the the, the note from being uh, editable from auto i will say read only which converts all the note into read only but as this icon here so if i press this icon then i can edit but when i stopped editing it will basically get locked. I need to just confirm that and that's it. It's been locked. So right now I cannot edit the text uh, by accident adding the stuff in there. There is a way for you to enter the text and let's say protect that. So I'll protect this note. So right now this note is protected and I no one can do anything to this note, note until uh, they actually get the password from me. As you can see right now, I don't think, oh yeah, as an, me as an admin, I can do that but no one else will be able to do. You can bookmark this. So it's created the bookmarks on here. Actually, hold on. Yeah, this is a bookmarks code block. It's created here. So right now it's much easier for me to jump in and get this one note opened. Shared, if I click on that, it will create a link. So if I click on this link, it will open in the white mode in a, because it's not supporting the uh, dark mode, white mode in the shared links, but it will create this. So you can copy this link and send to your friend. Uh, if you want to share something like a paste bin or use this as a paste bin service, you can just send the notes like that and they will be able to go and copy the code from here. And uh, templates, I can create this as a template if I want to. If I click on this option, uh, uh, own attributes, this adds a bunch of um, like uh, embedded codes, it's the short codes. For example, this uh, hashtag read only, that means that read only is added. So by turning read only on and off using this option, I can go on any note and just type that information. If I tap the hashtag icon, as you can see, there's a bunch of other stuff I can add in here. If I click on inherited attributes, this is where you will see inherited attributes from another note. If you create a note within the note, let's say I'm inside a code block. As you can see, this is just subfolder. So there is a main folder, subfolder, child folder, and so on. If I click on the plus icon, 
it will create a one note underneath it. So right now this becomes a parent note and this becomes a child note. And this is how you can start copying inherited attributes between. Uh, Notepad tells you exactly how you end up in this place. You are right from Trillium Demo, formatting example, code blocks. Note map, it tells you the link between those nodes. So checklist is linked to Trillium Demo, like a minimap is linked to Trillium Demo, code blocks is linked to Trillium Demo, and etc. Then similar notes, it gives you similar notes based on the text inside the note and in the in, in location of the hierarchy structure. The, the Trillium knows that this note is all linked to Trillium Demo, so it gives you a bunch of stuff that are tagged inside Trillium Demo main folder. And then this node is only 1 KB, subtree is 1 kilobyte in two nodes, showing you the size of the node. You can create revisions. If I click on these three dots and I click Save as Revision, Save as Revision, and then Save as Revision, if I click on this, Note Revisions, gives me the revisions of the note. So if you're writing a code or you're doing a bit of changes inside the text, etc., you create revisions and you can keep editing and then you can go and revert back or you just delete all the revisions in one go. So let's delete all that. What else we can do? We can click on this. We can add the um, canvas. Canvas is an Excel draw uh, embedded function feature where it allows you to draw diagrams and stuff. Let's say I'm going to make this to be my Proxmox node 1. So I'm just going to Control C, Control V. So copy pasta a couple of times. And here we go. Oh, actually, I've done too many. So I have three nodes inside my home lab. And let's say they are all linked. So this is linked to this. This is linked to this. I have a NAS. This will represent the NAS. Let's say right now. Each node is linked to my NAS as a CH storage and VM can jump between this or this if they want to. So let's say let's copy this arrow and this arrow specifically make it a bit bigger. You go and you can draw that and then if I click shade, someone will open this and we'll see the diagram I'm sending to them. So it's, it's very easy if you want to let's say um, make almost like a shorthand note and stuff you write it down embed the pictures uh, all shapes etc etc and you can get that one uh, shared with everyone you want and uh, there is a books there is another option to add the books there is a as you can see the notebooks and the the add the books and chapters and etc you can go and do all that and if i click on this link this is where book notes really um gives you information about how you can all set set all this up and the link to this documentation of a Trillium Next documentation page I'll leave in the description below this has a lot and a lot of information how each of the features of a Trillium works what I'm showing you in this video is just scratching the surface Trillium can do way 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 more and pretty much that is it what you what I wanted to show in this video, like I said, this is just a scratching a surface. Trillium can do way more. You can embed the web pages. You can run scripts inside the Trillium almost like on a cron task and a bunch of other stuff. I do I do recommend for you to go and check out this page. I'll leave a link to this page in the description below. We can go and see how everything works, how to set up on different places, how to run scripts. Here you go. How to run scripts and etc it's it's just a powerful 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 very powerful note-taking service anyway i'm yapping too many too much already if you enjoyed this video please subscribe or at least click like button uh, i read every single comment so if you have any questions about this video about this service or any other video i done or anything else related to home lab server home lab stuff just drop me a comment and i'll come back to you asap and Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.